Okay, Akshav, we're doing the Jerusalem Tanya, the unprepared, unedited, perhaps uneducated translation of the classic work of Jewish spirituality, perhaps the greatest work of Jewish spirituality, the Tanya, written by Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi. May his merit protect us. We're in chapter 38. Um, today is, uh, it's a leap year, and it's, uh, I think it's the 23rd, no, it's the 24th. So, yeah, the 20, we're going to do for the 23rd of Adar, Sheni, second Adar. So the Tanya says, even though both the body and the soul receive the same light, it's like we're, we're going to review what we said yesterday. It said even though the same light goes to the body and the soul, because both the body and the soul are from uh, from this, meaning the nefesh behemit, the nefesh chiyuni, the vital soul and the body receive the same light. Uh, still, there's no there's no difference between you can't compare the two, the kind of light that goes to the neshama and the light that goes to the vital soul in the body. She so we have the light is coming from the very mouth of God in heaven very far away from us and it takes constriction after constriction for this light to get here into our uh, into this body in this world so it takes tremendous constrictions, Vatsumim, Ad Shinit Labesh Beklipas Noga, until until it dresses in Klipat Noga. And Klipat Noga, again, it's anything physical in this world that left alone is not going to come to any good. But a Jew can use it for Torah and Mitzvot, and it brings it, rectifies it, and brings it up for the good. Like eating and drinking, uh, women, honor, money, these kinds of things. So uh, and then the light comes and it, it illuminates the matter of this world. I knew Mutarim. Ah, and the Tabalatani gives us a definition of Klipat Noga now. So if you didn't know what Klipat Noga is, now you know. Klipat Noga is Anything that's mutar, mutar means permitted. Anything that's mutar, permitted, and, and, and anything that's pure in this world. Again, uh, klipat noga is something we can use. So as a Jew, it has to be from a pure animal. Right? So if it's like we're talking about food or things we make out of animals, there's sometimes we don't need. Uh, we, there's no prohibition of touching a football if it's made of pig skin. You can still, you can touch a pig skin. You can uh, touch a pig. However, um, the, you can't eat it. Okay? So, um, very bad to eat the pig. Very, very bad. Very, 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 very bad. So So then the light that goes to the pure things in this world, it goes it then afterwards it goes to the impure things in this world. Because Klipat Noga again is, is an intermediary force between the purity and impurity. So the light comes to the Klipat Noga things, such as a cow. Light goes to the cow. And then, after going to the cow, it goes to the pig. Okay, from cow to pig. How could I make it more simple? Okay. 
Hashem Meir Umachai Derek Levush Se Eina Shave Bakula So So even though even though the light that's coming to it that even though we have it's you know the clip of is an intermediary between the two, still the the illumination and the drawing of the life force where 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 God il- vivifies and illuminates through through the garments of the Klippa Noga, or the garments of this world, anything in this world that's a garment for God's light, it's, it's not equal in anything. It's not equal in everything because there's different levels of limitation and constriction of God's light. Some places God's light is more greatly restricted. Some people's God's light is less restricted. But again, I, I'm just going to add parenthetically that even in things that are very, very holy in this world, like let's say the light that goes to Moshe Rabbeinu, even that light is so greatly, tremendously restricted because Moshe Rabbeinu is finite. He's a human being who lives and is born and lives and dies. And his spirit and his neshama live on in all of us forever. And he's coming back with all the dead in the resurrection of the dead. But still, he's a human being. So the, that means the light is very, very limited as opposed to God's infinite light, which is unmasked, ungarmented, unlimited. Huh? So he says in the physical body and in dirt and rocks and so forth, the illumination is very, very strong. There's a very high level of, sorry, the level of, very high level of, of, of limitation of the lights, of the illumination. It's a very great constriction. There's no constriction greater than and the life force is very little. A rock has a very small level of life force within it. And the physical body has a small, has less, but it also has a very small level of life force. Right? It's talking about rocks and inanimate things. To the point where it can't even, like a rock sitting on the ground, it's not going to grow. It's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't have the power of growth to it. And hera and uh, so the Derekal Nechlakot La Arba Madrigot. So usually we divide the world into four categories. We divide the world into Madrig Domem, Some, Achayu, Madaber, it's inanimate and, and vegetable, plant life, and living beings, and Madaber is human li- human beings who have the power of speech. So again, this Domem is inanimate. Someach is the animal, the vegetable kingdom, plants. Chai is any kind of animal life. Medaber is human beings who are separated from animals by our tremendously advanced power of speech, our power of abstract thought, our ability to do things like make wine and make bread. You know, these um, unique art forms. I don't know what, however you define it. We have capabilities above and beyond an animal where even even though we are to a certain extent naked apes, we all have an effigy of On the other side, there are things that really separate us from the animals, like I just mentioned before. So, so that's how we usually divide the world. These four levels of inanimate, plants, animals, and man, are co- correspond to the four letters of God's name, Baruch Hu, Yud, He, Vav, Ke. Shemimenu okay. Mushpaim. And that's where they're influenced from. That's where everything receives its life force from. Everything comes from God's name. All the life in the world comes from God's name. Kamo she'ein erech v'dimyon ehera v'amshachat ha'chiyut she'bedomem v'tzomeach ehera v'amshachat ha'chiyut v'lobeshim v'bechinat just the same way you can't compare the life force and the light that God sends to the rocks and to the plants to the life force and the light that God sends to animals and, and human beings because of our the great in other words this kind of life and light 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 and life force allows for our ability to have free motion and independence and thought the ability to sanctify God. Even though that it's all one light and it's all hidden to a certain degree. 
it's this, there's a different quality of the light going to the man and quality of light going to the animal and the plants and the and the rock, so forth. And everything has is basically dressed in a garment. I mean, the light is limited for everything in existence to a certain degree, because existence is outside of God. It's it's not outside of God. Existence is something other than God, right? God is eternal. We're talking about anything that is finite in the cosmos. So anything that is finite has a certain level of concealment, right? noga, and they all have one levush, and that levush is called noga. Noga. Kach en erech So the same way they can't compare the light coming to the rocks, that the light to the light that's coming to a man. So too, in erech v'dimun klau ben herat am shachat or in sofaruchu shnu pnimiut ritzonit barach li hester panim levush klau am yiram ulubashot b'mitzvot masyot mamash. So too, we can't compare the light coming to through noga to anything finite and, and material in this world to the light that's going for the coming from the infinite and the endless. May he be blessed which illuminates in the inside of God's will and desire may be blessed without any kind of any kind of concealment whatsoever. Um, the complete internal nature, internal unrevealed naked light of God without any, any dressing whatsoever, which illuminates into the practical mitzvahs that we do, such as putting on tefillin, shaking the lulav, reading a sefer Torah, any uh, giving charity, is anything, any practical mitzvahs that we do through means of material in this world has a light that cannot even be compared to the light that actually sustains the materials of this world. The Kain, the mitzvahs at Luyot, the Dibor, the Bituis, the Tayyim, the Kavana, the Shunech Mamish, and so too, when we're talking about the mitzvahs which are dependent on speech and, and the execution of, of the letters and, and, and um, of the, the movement of the lips that we do without any intention even, such as the, anything except the first verse of the Shema. We, can, we, we, we do the mitzvah just by moving our mouth. And, you know, again, it's better to have the intention to know what we're saying. But even if we didn't know what we were saying and we're saying the correct words, we're doing the mitzvah, right? So that light, it can't, we, can't, we can't compare any of the previous lights mentioned to the light that's going during these practical mitzvahs. The lights that's illuminating to the Jew while he's saying the Shema. Erev am shachat or insof baruch hu hameiram lubeshu bekavanot mitzvahs ma'asios. And there's no comparing the light of the action of the mitzvah that are done without kavana to the light of the mitzvahs that we do to the kavana and the intention and the internal the awareness that we when we do a mitzvah with awareness with fear before God and with the love of God and knowing before whom we stand and doing it for His sake and only His sake. That kind of light is the light that can't be compared to any of the lights that we saw before. When a person has the intention, so the awareness of what he's doing and to whom he's doing it for and the presence of God and the way he's serving God by this mitzvah with fear and with love and with intense cleaving beyond anything in this world, these kinds of lights are... The, the highest, most supreme, most supernal lights that could ever be conceived of in terms of the lights coming from the infinite may be blessed. So by al yadei kiyum ritzono shu ritzono echad. That's because we're doing it to fulfill God's desires. Because as we know, God and His desires are one. The kain the kavanat tefila the kriyachma, and so too with the intention and the aware that saying saying the prayer and saying the kriyachma with awareness and with intention. And saying the blessings with awareness and with intention before the one and only. You know, saying it directly to Baruch Atta, blessed are you, with a complete state of awareness. This, this is light that cannot be compared to any other light. <laughs> Thank you.